number four. We're going to continue chapter number four for this subject, uh, logic design. For chapter number four, uh, in previous lecture, we have looked at Boolean expression and also operation. We also look at the law and rules of Boolean algebra. Uh, I briefly introduced uh, De Morgan theorem. So I'm going to review a bit of this De Morgan theorem. We're going to then look at this uh, Boolean analysis of logic circuit. Okay, so now we are trying to see how we can use Boolean. Boolean is the mathematical expression to relate it with the logic circuits. So how we express the circuit, which is a graphical form of the um, digital electronics. So for example, you may have the N uh, gate, you may have the OR gate, uh, something like this. So you may have proper input A. Input A, you may have input B, and also you may have input C here. Uh, okay, you may have another, maybe NAND gate here. So how do you write the expression at the output here? So that is what we are going to look at this Boolean analysis of circuit. A little bit of uh, logic simplification as well as uh, standard form for Boolean expression and also the truth table. So we are going to look at uh, what we call SOP, uh, sum product and also POS, product of sum. So the intention for today is that we're going to cover this topic from the Morgan theorem, Boolean analysis of logic circuits, logic simplification, as well as the uh, standard form. So these are the four topics for today. I'm going to left a uh, kind of map for next week. Okay, so let's get to the Morgan theorem. The okay. uh, Morgan theorem. algebra and also uh, some of the laws that apply to Boolean algebra. Okay, so De Morgan theorem, very briefly about De Morgan theorem. Um, the first theorem of De Morgan that says that A, B bar equal to A bar plus B. So this is the first rules of De Morgan theorem. And you have learned in previous tutorial that this is actually an equivalent circuit for NAND and as well as uh, negative OR gate. Okay, so you can represent in a truth table and you can show that the output of this is actually similar to the output of that of negative OR gate for various combination possibility of the inputs, you can show that this is 1, 1, 1, 0, and this is also 1, 1, 1, 0. So that is the first rule of the Morgan theorem. The second uh, de Morgan's theorem is that A plus B with the over bar equal to A bar uh, dot or product B bar. Again, this is a no uh, gate, which is equivalent to negative and gate. So you can imagine that um, initially the bubble is in front here. So you want to move the bubble to the back here. Uh, so by moving that, you are changing the shape or the type of gate. So that's where, so when the bubble go to back here, so the original shape of or become n so that uh, therefore these two is uh, equivalent well as you can show this in the truth table uh, the output going to be one zero 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 
which is uh, 1000 as well. So this is the output here, and then this is the output here, right? So it's the same thing. So what you can see from this um, theorem uh, previously uh, here show that basically when you when you have this over bar across A uh, operator as well as B, uh, if you want to break the bar here uh, into a separate A bar, B bar, the operation in the middle here from plus become a dot or product. So that is what the Morgan theorem about. So you can apply the Morgan theorem by removing over bar. So you want to remove, you're going to break this bar here and then you want to change the operation over there. So what you're going to have is that uh, this should be equal to C bar dot D uh, the over bar become uh, break up into two parts. So you have this uh, C bar because originally you have C bar and the over bar become break into two parts. You have C bar, bar dot D bar. So C bar, bar is basically C uh, is C and then dot D bar. So that is how you simplify that um, uh, expression. And so this is the, the result that you should expect. Okay, all right. So the topic for today, we're going to look into Boolean analysis of a logic circuit. So again, you have logic circuit in a graphical form uh, that uh, can be analyzed by writing the mathematical expression or Boolean expression and combining the expression according to the rules of Boolean algebra that we have learned uh, earlier. So the word combi combinational logic circuit because uh, in the logic circuit you are going to combine uh, a number of gates. Remember you have a combination of and or no XOR gate can be uh, represented in digital logic circuit. So you can have example of the circuit here, having input, input A, B, C, D. So you have four inputs and then you have one output X uh, on the right, right hand side. Okay. So the question is that how can you apply Boolean algebra to derive the expression for X? So when you say expression for X means that we want to represent it mathematically. So what is the X in terms of the relationship with the inputs given here? So how do we do this? We have to break down into, into several parts. So for example, you see the first gate here is the no gate. So no gate, what is the output here that you can expect to see for the no gate? So it's actually A plus B you have a bar over bar because you have this bubble here, right? And then you can also derive. So what is the output of this uh, N gate here? So what is the output of N gate here? Basically, whatever that is coming from here. So A plus B over bar multiply with C, which is another input that coming here. So you have A plus B dot C. And then you look at X. So X is actually a combination of this input and that input. So you have A plus B dot C because this is an N gate. So you plus with uh, D, which is another input from the bottom line here. So that is basically what this question asks you to do. So you need to find what is X in terms of uh, four inputs, A, B, C, and D. Okay. 
So yeah, so that is another way to show it. So it doesn't matter if you write C uh, bracket A plus B bar or in any form, uh, the order uh, is not that critical, but the operation for each uh, input is the one that is most critical. Okay. Okay, uh, right. So what can you do next? So you have this, um, you have this, um, so let me clear this up a little bit so that you can see more clearly. Okay. So you have this A plus B bar over bar, uh, A plus B over bar, C, A plus B over bar plus D. So for this given expression of X, you can apply De Morgan theorem and also you can apply distributive law that we have learned earlier. So what is the De Morgan theorem that you can apply here is that you have A plus B here with the over bar. You can break this bar and also change the operation here. So basically what you have is that A bar dot B bar over here plus D. So that is the De Morgan theorem that you apply for the first term here. And we can also use distributive law. Basically, we just um, multiply C with whatever inside the bracket. So you have A bar B bar C plus D. So this is the expression uh, at the output here that is being simplified. So you have A bar B bar C plus D. So these two expression is similar. It's just that the bottom one is uh, uh, that uh, you have uh, simplified further using De Morgan theorem and also distributive law. Okay, right. So we can also use uh, software simulator such as multi-sim or logi-sim. Uh, to generate the truth table for the circuit in the previous example, for example. So the one that being shown in the textbook and also in the slide here is using a software called Multisim, but we can also use Logisim as well. So we can, uh, we can have a circuit. Uh, so this is basically the same logic circuit that you have from previous um, slide. So you have uh, not um, nor gate, you have N gate, you have all gate, right? So you have N gate, so you have all gate, you have no gate. So you have the three gates, you have the X as the output here, you have four inputs over here. So you can uh, design this, put in Logisim or Multisims, and then you can see uh, some of the function that is uh, available in the software so you can click that it will generate the truth table as well as the um, expression for the uh, output x so you can create the truth table uh, so basically the truth table will be generated uh, so for the four inputs A, B, C, D, you have this output X for this expression that we have derived uh, in the previous uh, slide. Okay. So that is the simplified expression that we have shown. So A, A, that A prime here, B prime C plus D is basically A bar b bar c plus d so this expression is the same as let's go back to few slide same as this expression when we build this circuit uh, in logisim or multisim we're going to have the same uh, expression that is derived here okay right and also, 
uh, in the simulator, you, you can create the truth table. We don't have to derive uh, manually using our hand. So we can generate this uh, truth table. Okay, uh, for, for the lab, I believe you have installed this uh, Logisim. Uh, so there are many uh, functions within Logisim that you can explore. So please explore that. Okay. So you can build a, a more complicated diagram or circuit in Logisim. Uh, there are several tutorials that are available online also. You can follow them. Okay. Uh, looking back at what we have taught in first week, so the CLO, the course learning outcome, there are three for this uh, subject. So CLO1, CLO2 and CLO3. Uh, CLO1 uh, is about designing the logic circuit using related laws and rules. So laws and rules uh, of Booleans algebra is the one that we learned in this chapter. So you should be able to construct logic circuit by using Logisim, for example. You should be able to construct logic circuit by uh, drawing it, by answering some of the questions, for example, in the test, in the exam. So that is a, a method of constructing or simplifying logic circuit, as well as report and also communication of the concept of the logic design. So again, so just want to relate back to what expect to learn in this subject. We are now here again just a reminder we are here you need to submit the lab one by today. Okay. Right. okay so another topic for this chapter four is about SOP as well as POS4. So when you write the boolean expression uh, x equal to a, B plus C, D plus A, A, D bar, for example. So this is a Boolean expression that is written in terms of sum of product. So this is what we call a sum of product. So sum of product means that, uh, maybe we change the color. Sum because we have the operation that is summation, sum uh, of product. So product is basically uh, A dot B, C dot D, even though we don't put dot here, A dot D bar is, uh, is a product. So basically this is the expression that we call uh, sum of product. There's another way to represent the Boolean expression in terms of product of sum or POS. So example of POS I will show later what is example of POS. Why this is important because in terms of implementation of logic design using uh, PLD for example, you have to have standard form of expression to simplify the the circuit design as well as in practical the overbar cannot extend for more than one variable so for example if you have a plus b overbar how you're going to uh, in some cases in some circuits you we don't prefer to represent this in circuit instead we want to eliminate this overbar so we can represent this in terms of its equivalence. We have A bar dot B bar by using Demoga theorem, for example. So we are going to uh, use this understanding. So in terms of sum of product, so sum of product, you have two or more product terms are sum means that so this is the first product term second product term which is summed by this uh, sign right sign sum is the addition so you have this product term you have this product term and you have the sum of these two product term you have the product term you have product term and you have sum here so this is what we call a sum of product 
form. Okay. It can also express the mathematical expression in term of product of sum. So product of sum, basically you have a product of these two sum term. So you have a product a product is basically a multiplication of these two addition, these two terms here. So you have this term, you have another term, and in between you have the product. So product is basically a multiplication. So a product is basically multiplications yeah, of the term. Of uh, two or more sum terms okay so that is basically what sop uh, not covid sop uh, this is the logic design sop sum of product okay the sum of product also can be represented in what we call a standard form what is the standard form standard form means that each variable must appear in each term so each variable so variable is what variable is a or b or c that we represent as the as the input to the expression so it must appear in each term for example you have x equal to a b plus um, c so this is not in the standard form because uh, all the variable doesn't appear in the two term here. Okay, let's look at another example that is maybe more, uh, more descriptive uh, later. <coughs> so why we want to express in terms of SOP because easy to implement the truth table as well as in terms of uh, implementing P PLD. So let's say if we have any non-standard term, so we can convert that to a standard form by multiplying the term by a term consistent of the sum of the missing variable and its complement. So you want to multiply by the missing variable and its complement. So we're going to see how we can do this. So let's consider this x equal to a b bar a bar b bar plus a b c. So you need to convert this to a standard form. So why this is not a standard form? Anybody can tell me, for example, why this is not a, why we call this not a standard form. Anybody? We not have D. Okay, that's one answer. Good, good try, Madia. Any other answer? Yeah, something is missing. Uh, something is missing in this term. So, what are the missing term? So, any other guess from the audience? dot mm -hmm. oh, tak tak dot dot ah, so sometimes kita memang represent the kita just macam short form ah kita kita tak tak represent uh, tak tulis dot walaupun dia ada dot sini tapi sebenarnya dia ada dot Tapi kenapa kita kata term ni bukan standard form tetapi kita need to convert to standard form? Uh, yang first term tak ada variable C. Ah, Dan first term tak ada variable C. Okay. So maksudnya C is missing from here. Some uh, C tak ada kat sini. Because uh, in this expression uh, dia ada A, B, C. So kita assume dalam this particular circuit that we're going to build ada tiga input saja. So kita ada A input, B input uh, and also input C. Okay, so then we can have 
combination of uh, various gates for example dekat sini uh, and then you have this uh, output x here so output x here being expressed by a bar b bar plus a b c uh, tadi jawapan tadi d uh, d is not here uh, since d is not uh, in any of the term here so we have first term dengan second term that is uh, that has this uh, plus sign in between kan okay so we only focus dekat tiga input uh, for this particular case kita ada tiga input so the one that is missing is c so macam mana kita nak make it uh, standard form so we can do by multiplying the term multiply by each term here each term here multiply by uh, by the missing variable and its complement so what is the missing variable so the missing variable is c that is missing in the first term so this is the first term so this is the second term so c is missing here kita multiply c and also missing variable is c the complement is c bar so kita the first term term does not include the variable c so we multiply by c plus c bar again if you look at the rules uh, that we have learned yes uh, not yesterday on thursday uh, c plus c bar will be equal to one so a okay c plus c bar is equal to one or a plus a bar is equal to one so you can imagine why this is equal to one because let's say c can take input of zero zero plus c bar zero bar is one so it's going to be one remember. let's say if c another state become one uh, plus with c bar which is zero so the output will be one so all right so so that is the term that we add to the first uh, so this is the term that we are going to multiply here so because this is equal to one it doesn't change uh, anything right so what we do is that a bar b bar multiply with the with the term as well as the complement plus abc so abc here doesn't change it doesn't change so just abc so what um, so now we have x equal to a bar b c plus a bar b bar c bar plus a b c that doesn't change so what you see here so the expression for the x now from this uh, initial uh, initial expression so now become uh, this expression where in each term, so now kita ada tiga term, so each term ada A, B, C, ada A, B, C, ada A, B, C. So this is what we call a standard form. So this is the standard form that we are looking at. Okay. Right. <coughs> Again, we can use uh, any simulator, multi-sim or logisim to convert the circuit into a standard SOP form. So we are still using the same circuit uh, in from the previous slide. You have this uh, N gate, you have uh, OR gate, you have a uh, NOR gate, you have the input A, B, C, D, you have the output X here. So we can, we can we can click the button in the simulator. So basically, uh, so this is the the button that you click. So you have seen previously the truth table can be generated. So this is not new. This is same as previously. So what what you what you click here is that it's going to convert the expression into the the standard form. So the standard form has a b c d a b c d so regardless a bar or not bar uh, so you have all the all the terms uh, being expressed uh, all the variable 
being being uh, represented in each of the term. So this is the standard form. So standard form is not the simplified form. Previously, what you have seen is the simplified form, but in some cases we want to represent into a standard form, so we can we can convert that into a standard form. Okay. Okay. So that is a SOP. Then we look at POS. So POS standard form. So what is the POS standard form? Again, each variable uh, must appear in each sum term of the expression. So so each variable must appear in the in the sum term of the expression. So let's say if you have a non-standard POS expression, so we can convert it to to the standard form by adding the product. So adding. So now the idea is that we want to add the product of the missing variable and its complement. So we want to add this missing variable and the complement. Just now we have variable C that is missing, so we we need to look at this C and C bar. And also by applying rule number 12 that we have learned previously, we can represent this in terms of that uh, A plus B multiplied by A plus C is equal to A plus B C. So this is rule 12 that we have explained earlier. Okay, so, so let's say we have this POS form. So why the first question is that why this is not a standard form? Any answer? So you have the first term, uh, you have the second term, you have the first term. So what is missing here? C. Ah, so you don't have C somehow in the first term here. So how we can how we can how we convert the first term does not include a variable C. So therefore, we need to have this C, C bar. Uh, so this is a bit different from POS just now. POS, we have C plus C bar, right? Which is equal to one. So here we add this term C multiply with C bar because this is a POS. So you have to observe that this POS, we need to uh, add the product of the missing variable. So this is the product of the missing variable. All right, so you add the product of the missing variable here. The Cassini, okay. And then you have uh, this expression. So you can expand this um, by using this rule 12 here. So this may not be very obvious to you in the first view, but you can have a look at this later. So you have that as the as the output uh, of the uh, I mean the output x is represented by the first term here multiply with the second term multiply with the third term here that is represented by all the variables uh, a b and c okay so this is for pos uh, in this uh, standard form okay Right, so that is what I want to cover for today. So we have talked about De Morgan theorem. So we have looked at this uh, Boolean analysis of logic circuit and logic simplification as well as the standard form for this uh, POS and SOP. Uh, next week, we're going to look at kind of map. Okay, so that's uh, that's the main topic that I want to cover for today. Any question that you have? No. Okay, all right. So, okay, I'm going to stop.